भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास श्रवण कीर्तना उत्तम श्लोके वासुदेवाय च चैप्टर कंटिन्यूइंग फ्रॉम वेर बी लेफ्ट लास्ट सो इफ यू रिमेम्बर एवरी वन सो ऑल द डिवोटीज including pandavas and other great sages everybody went to see bhishma dev who was about to leave his body bhishma dev has received all these all these devotees and lord krishna very very nicely with his sweet words and initially uh, and we discussed about why this past time manifested in this way it is because lord you know lord himself Try to console Yudhishthira Maharaj, who was not satisfied with his answers, and he, Lord wanted to bring out the glory of Vishnu Dev as it may be, and so he brings all these uh, Pandavas and other great sages to Vishnu Dev, and Vishnu Dev receives them nicely, and then uh, first he expresses his uh, uh, his concern for the you know for the difficulties that. The Pandavas endured all through their life, the difficulties endured by Kunti Maharani, and then he uh, he glorifies Lord Krishna as the next uh, as the next few verses. He glorifies, he says how despite his being equally kind to everyone, he has graciously come upon me when I am about to end my life huh? because I am his unflinching servitor, and also he acknowledges. Krishna is the uh, origin of everything and uh, is the original Narayana, uh, Adi Narayana. So all those glorifications were done. Vishnu Dev. So at this point, uh, let, let's read these verses. Atya Vesya Mano Yash. जन खले वर योगी मुझते Go ahead, sir. The personality of Godhead, who appears in the mind of the devotee, 
by attentive devotion and meditation and by chanting of the holy name, releases the devotee from the bondage of fruitive activities at the time of his quitting the material body. Mm. Mm. Giving of the body, when the yogi gives of his body, Muchute Kama Karma Bhi means all his bondage to fruitive activities will be taken away. Huh? Only by doing what? Bhaktiya Vesha Mano Yashmin Vachayan Vachayan Nama Kirtaya When the devotee uh, performs bhakti huh? by attending to devotion of the chanting of the holy name Nama Kirtaya When a devotee performs that Lord removed him all the fruit of activity when he was about to put his body. <clears throat> Bhaktiya Vesha means devout attention and constantly mind focused on Lord. So this is the process and that is this is the result. So after glorifying Lord, Bhishma Dev is glorifying the process of what we are seeing here. So Bhishma Dev is Mahajana. So he knows perfectly the religious principles. So when he is speaking about like this, it is from his experience. Personal experience. The physical existence can be as to endure the material conditions of threefold miseries, life after life. According to his fruity work, uh, such material life is produced by material desires only. Devotion service to the Lord does not kill the natural desires of the living being, but they are applied in the right cause of devotion service. This qualifies the desire of to be transferred to the spiritual sky. Generally, General Bhishma Dev, General Bhishma Deva is referring to a particular type of yoga called Bhakti Yoga. And he was fortunate enough to have the Lord directly in his presence before, before he, quit, he quitted his material body. He therefore decided that the Lord before his view in the following verses. So Bhishma Deva is about to quit his body. He is... Uh, he says he is very fortunate to, enough to have Lord directly in the presence before he quitted his material body. Not everybody has the opportunity, but for Bhishma Dev, it is uh, such an arrangement. <laughs> Mukam Bujo Diana Patacha to Buja May my Lord, who is four-handed and who is beautifully decorated lotus face with eyes as red as the rising sun, kindly await me and my kindness to this material body. Yeah, kindly await me at the moment <laughs> this material body. <clears throat> so Bhishma Dev was specifically attached to Chatur Bhuja form, you see. Uh, Mukam Bhoja means muk, whose face is like a lotus. Dhyana Patas Chatur Bhuja. So he is meditating on this uh, on this Chatur Bhuja form because that is the form he was attached to. Later on, we will also learn that he specifically was interested in Pardasarthi form of the Lord. Pardasarthi because he is uh, specifically uh, uh, attached to Virya Rasa. Uh, in relation to the Supreme Lord. Viri Rasa means where as a fighter. Yeah, Bhishma Dev was a fighter. So, he is specifically attached to Chatur Bhuja. So, he is requesting the Lord, may that Lord manifest upon me 
दर्शन उल्लासाटेड Uh, lotus feet of his face. So, <clears throat> at this point, Vishudev is uh, after glorifying the bhakti process. He is requesting the Lord to be present before him in the Chaturbhuja form at the time of his leaving his body. Uh, so it, it is, it is the humility of the devotee. Uh, so Vishudev was thinking maybe. after i quit my body i may not go to spiritual world or vaikuntha so let me see the form of the lord just before i quit if even if i don't go uh, at least i want to see the form of the lord now before i leave the body that is my only desire so this is actually humility of the vishwadev that he is speaking like that is a very beautiful purport let's uh, read this can can you read yes sir Bishma Deva knew well that Lord Krishna is the original Narayana. His worshipable deity was four-handed Narayana, but he knew that four-handed Narayana is a plenary expansion of Lord Krishna. Indirectly, he desired Lord Sri Krishna to manifest himself in his four-handed feature of Narayana. A Vaishnava is always humble in his behavior, although. it was sent percent certain that bishma deva was approaching vaikuntha dhama just after leaving his material body still as humble vaishnava he desired to see the beautiful face of the lord for after quitting the present body he might not in a position to see the lord any more a vaishnava is not puffed up although the lord guarantees his pure devotee entrance into his abode here bishma deva says as long as i do not quit his this body this means that the great general would quit the body by his own will he was not being forced by the laws of nature yeah. continue to is not bound by the laws he can quit according uh, because of the boon he has he can quit at his own time but still he is very humble and is not assuming that he is going to vaikuntha he want to see the form of the lord before he quits the body so please read mm. yes sir a pure devotee never very anxious to go back to the kingdom of god he entirely depends on the goodwill of the lord he is equally satisfied even if the lord desires him to go to hell the only desire that a pure devotee entertains in is that he may always be in rapt attention with thinking of the lotus feet of the lord regardless bishma deva wanted this much on me this that his mind be absorbed in thinking of the lord and that he pass away thus that is the highest ambition of a pure devotee so <clears throat> devotee is aware of the various forms of liberation but uh, when he quits the body that he may get like for example what are the forms of liberation a devotee gets salokya uh, sarupya samipya uh, what else is there srasti <clears throat> srasti i think so prapti srasti srasti uh, sarishti sarishti yeah sarishti yeah yeah i have been so sarujya sarujya yeah sarujya salokya sarishti samipya sarupya aikatvam api uta 
actually uh, uh, there is some more in, in the proper uh, we haven't hit the uh, screen for for writing it bina mat sevanam jana bina mat sevanam jana means devotee is attached to the service is not attached to the liberation if the service is not there mat sevanam jana if the service to lord is not there he is not interested is not about okay salokya means going to the spiritual world In the, living in the same planet as this spiritual, uh, as this spring lord, sarishti means <clears throat> not only living in the same planet. Sarishti means having the same opulences as the lord. In, uh, you have, you know, exact opulences that you know, the name, fame, all these things are as good as lord. Sami pya means not only opulences, not only same loka, but you are also in the close vicinity of the lord, in the closest. companions of the lord samipya you are more in parupya you exactly look like lord you see these are all one level above the other <coughs> ekatva means the merged in the uh, lord himself so these are all various types of liberations that uh, uh, a devotee can get when when he quits his body after performing devotion service and achieving complete purification of the heart but devotee is not attached to any of it because he is not attached to the facility these are all various facilities staying in the same loka staying this having the same all get ready so first day honge so devotee thinks what do i do what do i do if i have all these facilities if i don't have the service right so it doesn't mean anything to devotee having all these facilities because devotee is sent percent attached to the service of the lord he is only focused on service of the lord so even if it is <clears throat> even if it is narakaloka he is happy to go there uh, he is happy to do the service that is his desire he is not attached to the opulences that lord gives these are things that lord wants to give to his devotee but devotee is not interested in any of these various types of opulences that he may get when he goes to the spiritual world his attachment is service right wherever he is hmm? uh, another verse says you know whether it is whether i uh, whether i am in swargaloka or in narakaloka hmm? uh, both are equal to me as long as i have service to the lord hmm? that's what devotee says uh, so devotee is not attached to the various types of liberation he is only attached to the, so here also uh, uh, bhishma dev is his focus is may see the chaturbhuja form of the lord i don't know whether i'll get the liberation or not but when i quit this body before i quit this body may i see the four handed form of the uh, the supreme lord chaturbhuja form <coughs> he is equally desires even if the lord desires him to go to hell doesn't matter devotee is sent percent surrendered you know he doesn't look if if the service comes in the hell he is ready to go and he devotees are willing to sacrifice their life for example to bring out bhagavatam parikshit maharaj's life was sacrificed you know this whole incident of uh, doing this incident of throwing the snake on the uh, on the uh, you know on a spiritual leader spiritual master all of that is enacted by the lord so that he can bring out bhagavatam to he put arjuna in a state of confusion and anxiety to bring out bhagavad gita for the benefit of the world now uh, he is now putting yudhishthira maharaj in confusion to bring out the great you know qualities of uh, bhishma dev to show the world how great bhishma dev was as as his devotee so and lord yeah lord doesn't actually uh, so the whole war can be manifested by lord himself he doesn't take any uh, any effort for that he could have easily 
one single handedly but he wants to give all the credit to arjuna right this is uh, a constant theme in, in the way lord acts he always wants his devotees to be glorified he puts all these you know anxieties and difficulties in the life of his devotee pure devotee and devotee also comes out as a winner he actually perfectly orchestrates his surrender to the lord <coughs> and uh, and you know lord always wants to give full credit to his devotee uh, the whole uh, mahabharata war credit was goes to actually primarily pandava specifically arjuna right so like that now even in this case lord wants to give all the credit to bishma dev here right and so uh, he uh, he was not the uh, yudhishthira maharaj was not even satisfied by the instructions of lord himself that is the situation was uh, he kept suta vacha suta vacha yudhishthira astad akarnye yudhishthira astad akarnya sayanam sarpanjare ಸೂತ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೇಡ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಯುಧಿಷ್ಠಿರ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ಹಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ಭೀಷ್ಮ ದೇವ ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಅಪೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಟೋನ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ in the presence of all great rishis about the essential principles of various religious duties hmm. <coughs> yudhishthira maharaj after hearing bishma dev uh, in this in this previous verses he now inquires about the principles that he has to uh, you know perform as a king kingly duties yeah please read prabhu lord sri krishna inspired <clears throat> lord sri krishna inspired maharaja yudhishthira to ask bhishma deva in the presence of many great sages indicating thereby that the lord's devotees like uh, bhishma deva although apparently living as a worldly man is far superior to many great sages even vasudeva vasudeva another point is that bhishma deva at that time was not only lying on a death bed of arrows but was greatly aggrieved because of that state one should not have asked him any question at that time but lord sri krishna wanted to prove that his pure devotees are always sound in body and mind by dint of spiritual entanglement and, and that is enlightenment and sorry en- enlightenment and thus in any circumstances a devotee of the lord is in perfect order to speak of the right way of life vidhishthira also preferred to solve his <coughs> problematic questions by asking bhishma deva rather than ask any one else present there who was seemingly more learned than bhishma deva this is all due to the arrangement of the great uh, wheel carrier lord sri krishna who establishes the glories of his devotee devotee the father likes to see the son become more famous than himself hmm. so in the assembly lord krishna is there vyasadev is there narada muni is there uh, sukadev goswami is there all of these great devotees are there but lord wants to i mean all some of them are great devotees also but lord wants to give the glory you know give uh, the world to recognize the glory of vishwadev see this vishwadev who was on um, a painful very very painful situation is on the bed of arrows what can be more painful than that even in that condition he is very sound in his mind and uh, body you know? he is able to receive nicely and em- speak empathetically glorify uh, bhagwan glorify the process of bhakti this is all possible uh, because of the mercy of the lord upon him and uh, lord it, it is the desire of the lord to glorify his pure devotees even more than his, his himself so 
this is a constant theme in the life of lord he always uh, tries to take the opportunities to put his you know to give full credit to his devotees he doesn't want to take any credit he could have done all of this himself he could have taught uh, yudhishthira maharaj he could have nicely convinced he could have won the war he could have done all these things but he always wants to give the credit to his devotees purusha <clears throat> swabhava bhava vihitan purusha swabhava vihitam ಭಕ್ಷಣೀ <clears throat> at maharaj yudhishthira's inquiry bishma deva first defined all the classifications of castes and orders of life in terms of the divisions described contraction by detachment and interaction by attachment hmm. so he systematically in two fold division described the contraction by detachment interaction by attachment so uh, he describes castes and orders of life the uh, varnas and ashramas so it's a very very long purport actually these varnas are you know given by the lord as given in bhagavad gita 413 yeah, we'll just read a small part of it there is a lot of discussion by uh, prabhupada in his purport <clears throat> yeah please read this these are basic instructions Vishnudev gives. Self-realization is distinguished from the life of the lower animals. Engaged in eating, sleeping, fearing and mating. Bhishma Deva advised for all human beings nine qualifications. Not to become angry, not to lie, to equally distribute wealth, to forgive, to beget children only by one's legitimate wife. to be pure in mind and hygienic in body not to be inimical toward anyone to be simple and to support servants or subordinates one cannot be called a civilized person without acquiring the above mentioned preliminary qualities besides these the brahmanas the intelligent men the administrative men the mercantile community and the laborer class must acquire special qualities in terms of occupational duties mentioned in all the vedic scriptures so he describes the various duties and various qualities of all these different classes of men yes this is the word sutras <clears throat> continue here the varnas are so to speak classifications of different occupations and ashrama dharma is gradual progress on the path of self realization both are interrelated and one is dependent on the other the main purpose of ashrama dharma is to awaken knowledge and detachment the brahmachari ashrama is the training ground for the prospective candidates in this ashrama it is instructed that this material world is not actually the home of the living being mm. yeah so <clears throat> in this ashrama it is instructed that this material world is not actually the home of the living being yeah. Yeah, please read household life is for one who is attached under vanaprastha and sanyasa orders of life or for those who are detached from material life the brahmachari ashrama is especially meant for training both the attached and detached hmm. so brahmachari ashram means brahmacharis who are unmarried so their 
purpose is primarily to propagate the messages of uh, you know, of, of the lord to all the other ashramas whether it is grihastha manupastha or sanyas we see that a lot of devotees were brahmacharis or who dedicate their life completely for the service of the lord they visit us sometimes you know. even sanyasis of course visit uh, so that is their duty to train rest of us especially householders dana dharma raja dharma dana dharma raja dharma moksha dharma vibhagasha moksha dharma vibhagasha dharma dharma ड्यूटीज ऑफ ए किंग All of these were described. That's what Bhagavad Gita says. Yeah. Please read. He then explained. Anybody on mute? He then explained by divisions, acts of charity, the pragmatic activities of a king, and activities for salvation. Then he described the duties of women and devotees. both briefly and extensively so dana dharma means acts of charity raja dharma means the duties of a king moksha dharma means uh, activities for liberation or salvation vibhaga sa all these four divisions then also stri dharma the duties of a woman and the devotees bhagavad dharma ultimately it is bhagavad dharma everybody is, should follow bhagavad dharma He extensively and briefly described. This is uh, basically covering all the knowledge that Yudhishthira Maharaj is seeking after. Yeah, please just read this. Prabhuji, the king knew well. that the supreme personality of godhead never tolerates any insult to his unalloyed devotees such tapasvis were trusted leaders even of the rogues and thieves who would never disobey the orders of tapasvis please continue the king would give special protection to illiterates the helpless and widows of the state defense measures were arranged previous to any attack by the enemies so these are all duties of king and why you selected this part yeah. oh, mainly because king, so previously the kings were like this so they would never tolerate any insult to unalloyed devotees because uh, pure devotees are are like treated like representatives of the lord so if they were insulted it's it's not good for the society it's not good for the world in general so uh, the king would never tolerate especially the insult to brahmanas especially unalloyed devotees uh, so that was the standard that was existing in the in the, in the previous ages yeah so a lot of instructions here yeah please read this one the last item taught by bhishma deva was the process of pleasing the lord we are all eternal servants of the lord and when we forget this essential part of our nature we are put into material conditions of life the simple process of pleasing the lord for the householders especially is to install the de- deity of the lord at home by concentrating on the deity one may progressively go on with the daily routine work worshiping the deity at home 
serving the deity, hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, residing in a holy place, and chanting the holy name of the Lord are all inexpensive items by which one can please the Lord. Thus the subject matter was explained by the grandfather to his grandchildren. Hmm. So the Prabhupada especially focused on installing the deity of the Lord at all. This is something that everybody can do easily. And by installing the deity at home, you are accepting, you can mute yourself. Yeah. Uh, by installing the deity of the Lord, one gets, one develops some you know, connection with the Supreme Lord by, by every day offering prayers, offering arati, offering bhoga, Right? and eating prasadam, all of this is possible when you have a deity at the home and you get the opportunity to have the darshan of the Lord every, every, every single day. So that is a very important instruction for all the, especially grihasthas. So grihastha should have a deity installed at their home. So that helps one gradually progress in his devotion service. And also another important thing is Serving the devotees. Serving the devotees means inviting the devotees to home once in a while and you know, giving them or feeding them prasadam or whatever, like whatever they're looking for, any service that we can do. Sometimes visitors come, visiting devotees come. So whenever you do any effort to please them and serve them, those are all going to your spiritual credits. So never think that, you know, I just did like some service five years ago. I don't know who really remembers. Actually, all of them are becoming your spiritual credits. And uh, every act of uh, such kindness or you know such uh, act to act done towards pleasing the devotees will go into your spiritual credit, and it will uh, it will uh, strengthen your bond with the Supreme Lord. Hearing Srimad Bhagavatam like we are doing now. We are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam of Prabhupada, given by Prabhupada, residing in a holy place. We should desire to reside in the uh, holy place because the holy place is surcharged with uh, the memories of the Lord. Right? So many holy places in India, especially Vrindavan, Mayapur, uh, Puri. Uh, you know, we are all in the West. Anytime you get the opportunity to go to India, uh, to see your parents or uh, you know to do any other activities you have, make it a point to visit holy places. Uh, you know because holy places will keep our vibrations strong, spiritual connection with the Lord strong, and chanting the holy name, which is which is what we are supposed to do every single day, is the uh, Yuga Dharma for Kali Yuga. These are all inexpensive items. Right? It doesn't cost us anything, and anybody can do. Uh, we don't need uh, we don't need any specific material conditions to satisfy these simple requirements. Worshiping the deity, hearing Shrimad Bhagavatam, serving the devotees, visiting holy places, chanting the holy name. Very powerful instructions. Simple instructions anybody can follow, but have powerful in, in, uh, impact on our life. Thus, the subject matter was explained by the grandfather to his grandchildren. Huh? Prabhuji, mm -hmm. uh, yes, quick Mother. question. Uh, so, um, uh, you did mention like we can, so if somebody is in like early stage of Krishna consciousness, are they still um, worthy enough to invite, uh, you know, pure de devotees to their home? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> we should know what uh, the expectations are like. Uh, like, uh, like if you are cooking prasadam, we need to follow certain standard. Yeah. If you are not able to follow, uh, you know, all the principles of like a regular devotee, like chanting 16 rounds and uh, not eating onion garlic. At least, when you are inviting, make sure all these conditions are satisfied. Okay? 
you at least that day you chant 16 rounds and make sure there is no onion garlic in, in the food you cook and offer it to lord and do all those necessary things then you can definitely invite uh, if you are following all of that yeah then there is no hesitation even if uh, you know uh, you are not uh, like uh, being coming to the temple for a long time or uh, that's fine you can still as long as the basic conditions are met you can definitely invite by inviting them you actually see a lot of transformation by serving them you see a, uh, a big change in your life thank you prabhu definitely we are all uh, qualified to do that dharmard ar dharmard kaam moksham cha धर्मार्थे <laughs> Then, then he then he described the occupational duties of different orders and statuses of life citing instances from history where he was himself well acquainted with the truth thank you sananda so he next described the occupation duties of different orders uh, brahmanas kshatriyas citing instances from history and he was himself well acquainted with the truth status is please read we are simply concerned with the instructive lessons of such instances mm. even though they are not in order by our limited range of understanding bishma deva described such narrations before maharaja yudhishthira in reply to his different questions mm. <clears throat> yeah so we described in depth all these instructions to the students dharmam pravadatastasya dharmam pravadatastasya sakala pratyupashtita sakala pratyupashtita yo yoginas chandam richur डिसाइड <laughs> Vishwadev has the the boon of dying at his own will, so time time is coming up. He <clears throat> you know, he was continuing the instructions, and he noticed that sun's core uh, course ran into the northern hemisphere. So his sun is about to set. So let's see what he says now. So proper describes about how mystic yogis uh, live at their own will. आदिपुरुषे कृष्णेन सात्पीत पते चतुर्भुजे पुरास्तिते मिलित दृक् धारयाथ 
who spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings and who fought on thousands of battlefields and protected thousands of men stopped speaking and being completely freed from all bondage withdrew his mind from everything else and fixed his wide open eyes upon the original personality of godhead shri krishna who stood before him four handed dressed in yellow garments that glittered and shined so it's exactly like how uh, prabhupad left the world you know towards he was giving the purport of bhagavatam while he was living to till the last moment he was in the service of the lord so similarly bishma dev upon the uh, instruction of the lord he was speaking the duties to uh, king yudhishthira and when the time came he just left the body you know, stopped speaking being completely free from all bondage with to his mind from everything else and fixed his wide open eyes upon the personality of godhead sri krishna who stood before him four hundred dressed in yellow garments glittered and shine krishna lasat pit pate chatur bhuje so so yeah, it's very wonderfully described how he should have um, <clears throat> Yeah. So let's read these. There are few instructions here. Yeah. Please read. Uh, In the momentous hour of leaving his material body, Bhishma Deva set the glorious example concerning the important function of the human form of life. The subject matter which attracts the dying man becomes the beginning of his next life. Therefore, if one is absorbed in thoughts of the supreme Lord Sri Krishna. he is sure to go back to godhead without any doubt this is confirmed in the bhagavad gita a uh, point 5 and whoever at the time of death quits his body remembering me alone at once attains my nature of this there is no doubt verse 6 whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body that state he will attain without fail verse 7 therefore arjuna you should always think of me in the form of krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting with your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me you will attain me without doubt verse 8 he who meditates on the supreme personality of godhead his mind constantly engaged in remembering me undeviated from the path he o partha is sure to reach me verse 7 9 one should meditate upon the supreme person as the one who knows everything as he who is the oldest who is the controller who is smaller than the smallest who is the maintainer of everything who is beyond all material conception who is inconceivable and who is always a person he is luminous like the sun and being transcendental is beyond this material nature verse 10 one who at the time of death fixes his life air between the eyebrows and in full devotion engages himself in remembering the supreme lord will certainly attain to the supreme personality of godhead verse 11 persons learned in the vedas who utter omkara and who are great sages in the renounced order enter into brahman desiring such perfection one practices celibacy i shall now explain to you this process by which one may attain salvation verse 12 the yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements closing all the doors of the senses and fixing the mind on the heart and the life air at the top of the head one establishes himself in yoga verse 13 after being situated in this yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable om the supreme combination of letters 
if one thinks of the supreme personality of godhead and quits his body he will certainly reach the spiritual planets verse 14 for one who remembers me without deviation i am easy to obtain o son of prata because of his constant engagement in devotional service verse 15 after attaining me the great souls who are yogis in devotion never return to this temporary world which is full of miseries because they have attained the highest perfection shri bhishma deva attained the perfection of quitting his body at will and was fortunate enough to have lord krishna the object of his attention personally present at the time of death he therefore fixed his open eyes upon him he wanted to see shri krishna for a long time out of his spontaneous love for him because he was a pure devotee he had very little to do with the detailed performance of yogic principles simple bhakti yoga is enough to bring about perfection so in bhakti yoga the most essential element is love for the lord that we have to do even though we do all the chanting and all of that the underlying principle is one should develop the uh, unalloyed devotion towards the lord and even uh, the devotion to hear the katha to serve his devotees those are the ultimate principles that one should develop विशुद्धया धारम धारनया हताशु बास विशुद्धया धारनया हताशु बास तदीक्ष तदीक्षा तदीक्षयै वास गताय धाश्रमा युधाश्रमा तदीक्षयै वासु गतयुधाश्रमा निवृत्त सर्वेंद्रिय वृत्ति विभ्रमास इनऑस्पेशियसनेस and was relieved of all bodily pains caused by the arrow wounds thus all the external activities of his senses at once stopped and he prayed transcendently to the controller of all living beings while quitting his material body hmm. so he was looking at the lord and yeah, he quit his body so this is the uh, uh, last few words by bhishma dev shri bhishma uvacha shri bhishma uvacha iti mater upakalpita prishna iti mater upakalpita prishna bhagavati satvata punga vapi punni bhagavati satvata punga devi bhavi sukham upagate kvachit vihartum ऑक्यूपेशनल ड्यूटीज in the all powerful lord krishna he is always self satisfied but sometimes being the leader of the devotees he enjoys transcendental pleasure by descending to material world although from him only the material world is created hmm. so vishnu dev wanted to fully concentrate his mind on lord this glorifying lord that lord sometimes comes to the middle world uh, 
which was originally created by him. Just some part of Further, he glorifies him. Tribhuvanak Tribhuvanak Kamanam Tamala Varnam Tribhuvanak Kamanam Tamala Varnam Tavikara Gaura Var Ambar Vandadhan Tavikara Gaura Var Ambar Vandadhan Uralaka Kulavrita Nabjam Jaya Sakirati Astume Navadhya. Sri Krishna is the intimate friend of Arjuna. He has appeared on this earth in his transcendental body, which resembles the bluish color of the Tamala tree. His body attracts everyone in the three planetary systems, upper, middle, and lower. May his glittering yellow, yellow dress and his lotus face, covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp, be the object of my attraction, and may I not desire fruity results. So this is a, another beautiful prayer of Vishuddha. So he described the beauty of the Lord, Lord's body. It is bluish color of Tamala tree. His body attracts everyone in all the three planetary systems. In fact, in the entire existence, his body is, uh, is very, very attractive for everybody. And may his glittering yellow dress and his lotus feet covered with paintings of sandalwood pulp be the object of my attraction. May that be, uh, be the prominent thing in my mind. May I not desire fruity results. Anavadhyaya. The prayer of Vishwadhyaya. Please read. When Sri, when Sri Krishna, by his own internal pleasure, appears on earth, he does so by the agency of his internal potency. The attractive features of his transcendental body are desired in all the three worlds, namely the upper, middle and lower planetary systems. Now, nowhere in the universe are there such beautiful bodily features as those of Lord Sri Krishna. Therefore, his transcendental body has nothing to do with anything materially created. Arjuna is described here as the conqueror and Krishna is described as his intimate friend. Vishmadeva on his bed of arrows after the battle of Kurukshetra is remembering the particular dress of Lord Krishna which he put on as the driver of Arjuna's chariot. So this is the dress of Lord. I mean of course Lord always wears his yellow garments. He was trying to remember the form of the Lord when he was sitting uh, in the chariot of with Arjuna. Because that's that is his mode of worship for Bhishma He was trying to uh, remember this Pardasarthi form of the Lord. This is actually description of the Pardasarthi form of the Lord. Yeah, continue Mataji. Yes, so while fighting was going on between Arjuna and Bhishma, Bhishma att Bhishma's attraction was drawn by the glittering dress of Krishna and indirectly he admired his so-called enemy Arjuna for possessing the Lord as his friend. Arjuna was always a conqueror because the Lord was his friend. Bhishma Deva takes, his op take this, takes this opportunity to address the Lord as Vijaya Sakhi, friend of Arjuna, because the Lord is pleased when he is addressed conjointly with his devotees who are related with him in different transcendental humors. While Krishna was the charioteer of Arjuna, sun rays glittered on the dress of the Lord and the beautiful hue created by the reflection of such rays was never for, forgotten by Bhishma Deva. As a great fighter, he was relishing the relation of Krishna 
in the chivalrous humor that transcendental relation with the lord in any one of the different rasas humors is relishable by the respective devotees in the highest ecstasy less intelligent mundaneers who want to make a show of being transcendentally related with the lord artificially jump at once in, in to the relation of conjugal love imitating the damsels of rajat dama such a cheap relation with the lord exhibits only the base mentality of the mundaneer because one who has relished a conjugal humor with the lord cannot be attached to worldly conjugal rasa which is the condemned even by mundane ethics the eternal relation of of a particular soul with the lord is evolved thank you can you continue yes, yes a genuine relation of the living being with the supreme lord can take any form out of the five principal rasas and it does not make any difference in transcendental degree to the genuine devotee bishma deva is concrete example of this and it should be carefully observed how the great general is transcendentally related with the lord so all the living entities have the specific relationship with the lord right? the five principal rasas right? what are the five relationships one can have with the lord madhurya five rasas madhurya ras sakya rasa okay Sa- highest is madhurya rasa vatsalya rasa vatsalya is the parental relationship okay next vatsalya rasa sakya rasa sakya rasa as a friend okay ரிலேஷன்ஷிப்ஸ் Uh, in which one can engage in service to the supreme lord so every personality in the spiritual world engages in one of these rasas engages in one of these relationship with the supreme lord and they fully transcendental uh, and fully satisfied everybody is satisfied in their own specific relationship with the supreme lord yeah actually we can end here we need to go so we will continue from 34th verse in the next class thank you all so much if you have any questions we can discuss now <clears throat> any questions uh, prabhu um, in our uh, sampradaya um, shanta rasha is not only for rasas are uh, i heard recently from someone mm-hmm. not the neutral the relationship where you are like there is no action that neutral it starts from uh, dasya rasa doesn't um, mm-hmm. uh, is mm-hmm. yeah i heard that. that's correct actually yeah yeah that's true actually i mean in in bhakti if one perfects his life through yoga he can be in santras also because bhakti is an engagement engagement in pleasing the supreme lord uh, in our sampradaya especially at least one is engaged in some service right so it begins with dasya actually dasya and abo is uh, in one, one way or the other devotee is serving the supreme lord so that's why it's called like you know our at least our sampradaya uh, basically focuses on dasya and abo not santa because santa in santa devotee is not engaged actively in the service of the lord right uh, like he was only appreciating the form of the lord right in the santras santras means you are admiring the lord lord of his great qualities but you are not to the degree of serving the lord you have only great admiration admiration is the beginning but 
one should be engaged in the service of the lord that's when true transcendental pleasure is obtained and that is be- that begins with dasirasa dasirasa means like uh, for dasirasa who is the example for us who is the hanuman ji hanuman ji is fully engaged in uh, the service of the lord ram always so is the best example of a servitorship so dasirasa so dasirasa exists in vaikuntha dasirasa and then sakirasa and then vatsalya rasa uh, and then madhurya rasa so all these relationship exist in the spiritual world where one is engaged i mean santrasa exists in the spiritual world because there will be uh, devotees who are uh, like trees there will be trees there will be rivers rivers also have life in the spiritual world right? uh, will not, nothing is inert in the spiritual world so there will be santrasa also there but uh, especially the one uh, sampradaya that we follow at least begins with dasirasa because one is engaged in the service of the actually yeah. any other questions but we can always experience different rasas at different times so is that right yeah uh, yeah sometimes you admire the lord yeah so one can experience various rasas so the dasirasa includes minimum santrasa and dasirasa so it is like that next uh, next rasa sakirasa includes dasya and santa so each of them is like that so the higher mm-hmm. rasa includes all the characteristics of the lower and the current one right yeah so vatsalya mm-hmm. rasa includes sakirasa dasirasa and santrasa so it's like that Yeah. Any other questions? Not too late. Prabhuji, Veerya Rasa is also there, right, Prabhu? Yes. Yeah, Veerya Rasa is a, is a Kaivalry. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's not one of these primary. It is, mm-hmm. these are called secondary Rasas. And mm-hmm. secondary Rasas, Hasya Rasa, Veerya Rasa, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there are certain uh, you know there are few more actually nectar of devotion describes these rasas 12 rasas yeah. right huh? there are 12 rasas prabhu ji right yeah, yeah. bhaiya bhaiya so the, yeah you remember other names mother ji yeah. i don't remember the i think okay. so there are few additional rasas in which lord relates to uh, the devotee but they are not so prominent like uh, 95% of jivas fall in the four uh, the five categories that uh, the primary rasas but there are these other rasas also veer rasa is where vishnu dev falls in right? like that those are difficult to also experience right yeah, from those are not like prominent yeah. ones god has specific relationship lord wants to you know fight with only few right not with everybody <laughs> so it's like that. so that's why veer rasa is experienced with some devotees only not everybody is uh, uh, can go there uh, can go like bhishma dev yeah bhishma dev is in the veer rasa he's not in the he's not in any of the sakhi rasa dasi rasa <laughs> he's not in any of that hasya rasa uh, yeah. any example hasya rasa it is actually from the perspective of the lord how lord is pleased for example um, lord has the desire to fight for example right? so then there is uh, he chooses a devotee for example so bhishma dev was one such devotee who uh, shows his chivalry to please the lord so that's why uh, he basically provides the pleasure of chivalry to the lord so sakirasa means the devotee pl- provides the pleasure of friendship so madhumangal is a such devotee right? um, so based on the relationship the devotees are actually giving the pleasure to the lord so that is how the the eternal rasas are classified so in, in what way the devotee is pleasing the lord in what relationship what rasa yeah. anything else 
Babaji, the description of Krishna given here is the Parthasarthi form, right? Uh, so in our uh, Sampradaya, we are always uh, worshipping Krishna and Vrindavan. Uh, so is, um, is there anything wrong or like, is it okay to be attracted to Parthasarthi form? Yeah, it is okay because uh, even though, so uh, ISKCON as a society is providing a wide forum for uh, you know engaging in devotion service. It doesn't mean that uh, everybody is attracted to uh, one specific uh, form of the law, right? Uh, yeah, it is perfectly acceptable as long as it is in the in the pure devotion service. So not everybody who uh, practices the philosophy of Iskan or, or you know the Gaudi Vaishnava Siddhanta would exactly land in uh, in this rasa uh, or Madhuri rasa. It, it's that is what we aspire for. Uh, doesn't mean we exactly get that one based on our own uh, swarupa, right? So not everybody is the same. Mm. So we can appreciate all these various like. Uh, even when uh, Lord Chaitanya was traveling, sometimes he would visit the temple of Lord Shiva, and uh, he glorifies the uh, the mood of love of Lord Shiva towards Lord Krishna. Right? So in this way, uh, Lord Himself praises. For example, when he hears the he loves Pranad Maharaj so much, Lord Chaitanya, but he is not engaged in uh, you know. The Madhuri Rasa, for example, Dalal uh, Maharaj is in Dasi Rasa. So, as a as a practitioner of devotional service, we have a great appreciation for all the various devotees who are engaged in various rasas. Um, uh, but we continue to do the uh, the given process by our spiritual master, and. You know, we continue. We only have uh, we in our hand. We only have you know what is described. Ultimately, uh, we may end up being whatever it may be, but uh, we just continue to practice the principles given to us as part of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Mm -hmm. We don't have any uh, like uh, you know, we have to have focus. Definitely, we have. Uh, we try to. Uh, especially like in the beginning, Sadhana Bhakti is primarily in Dasya Rasa. Sadhana Bhakti that we practice. Raganuga, when you when one advances to Raganuga Bhakti, where one has spontaneous love, that is when he, uh, you know, uh, more towards, uh, you know, Madhurya Bhava uh, comes into the play, uh, you know, life of devotee. Mm -hmm. yeah. But in the Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, we don't differentiate, or we don't... Uh, uh, over and over one or the other and we have appreciation for all the uh, various paths that devotees have taken like for example Bishwadev right? yeah. and what is the uh, age of Krishna when the Bhishma has uh, passed the body Prabhuji? so it is uh, you know uh, it is at the time of you know, victory for uh, Yudhishthira Maharaj right? so Lord Krishna is mentioned when he was, when the war was happening, he's 87 years old. So he should be around that age. 87, okay. 87, yeah. But that age is according to previous ages, right? So they were living for at least 500 years in those 500 oh, okay. years. Yeah. So Towards Bhishma, end, Bhishma should be even more old. Oh, Bhishma is much older. Bhishma is much older. And Pandavas ruled for about 30 to 40 years, I think. So it's a, in fact, in Vapar Yoga, life, uh, their lifetime is much shorter. Uh, generally, they live for almost close to you know, 800 to 1000 years. Uh, mm -hmm. A lifetime of those people of those years. Right? Mm -hmm. But Lord lived only for 1.7 years, Lord Krishna, and he lived in this middle world, mm -hmm. physically. Uh, and the war happened. Arjuna was also 87 years when the war was happening. You don't feel that when, when you see his body, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. 
because the life lifespan is much longer there. It's almost thousand years. So in Kali Yuga, it is hundred years. Uh, it's one one tenth of previous years. Sure, Ramji. Thank you so much, Babaji. Hare Krishna. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.